Okay, hello. Um, this is my video response for prompt six, option A. It's to explain in detail the difference between an FIR and an IIR filter design, and to also provide some example equations and code with that. Um, for this method uh, in the prompt, it was to choose whatever uh, method uh, there was an option of choosing method. Uh, I'm gonna do sort of like a video lecture slash max combo. Uh, there's only a little bit of max in this, but uh, it's easiest, I think, to lay it out like this to be able to bounce back and forth between talking and looking at code. Um, so uh, to dive in, uh, FIR filters and IIR filters are the two categories that we discuss when we're talking about digital filter designs. Uh, they underpin uh, more complicated designs and are fairly often used as hybrids. We could see that uh, down here, right? We have uh, uh, FIR portions and IIR portions uh, for both of these uh, popular objects, the biquad and the all pass. Uh, but they have a the uh, FIR and IIR have a couple notable differences and. Uh, that is the way that they uh, th that they work. So FIR stands for finite impulse response. Uh, they're also sometimes called feed forward filters for reasons that we'll see shortly. And IIR filters are known as infinite impulse response, or they're also sometimes called feedback filters. Now, uh, jumping back to FIR, we could see an example equation here. This is basically like the most simple uh, FIR filter we could do. This is a uh, sort of like a comb filter uh, style. Uh, so we have Y of T, which is the output of the filter, equals X sub T, which is the current input, plus uh, some gain coefficient, that's what this A sub 1 stands for. So plus a gain coefficient times X sub T uh, minus 1, or minus, they had, they're using this other uh, T type symbol, but 1 would be uh, uh, applicable as well. Uh, so uh, the current sample minus some amount of time. Now, uh, that's, that's really the most straightforward example. Uh, so we could see that uh, implemented over here. We have uh, an input coming in here. This is by a uh, little gen FIR patcher. Um, we have our input coming in. That input is going to uh, go to the addition, right? So this uh, X sub T, that's this input. That's the uh, current input sample. Uh, that's going to be added together with the current, impul uh, the current input minus some amount of time. In this implementation, we're, we're treating, uh, we're doing x sub t minus one, so a one sample delay. Uh, so that one sample delay, right, this is x sub t minus one. Uh, that's gonna be multiplied, right, multiplied right here by some gain coefficient, right? So a sub one times x sub t uh, minus one. And then that's this term is going to be added with the current input sample. Uh, when the filter first starts up, obviously, there's not gonna be any uh, uh, delay stored in there, so the, the input will just pass. Everything after that, that current input's gonna be stored. It's gonna be stored for one sample and then added uh, with the current sample. Uh, now this has a filtering effect uh, and it operates by making some frequencies dip to zero. Uh, and we could see that here, right? We have uh, regular frequency response and it dips down sharp to zero, comes back up, dips down again to zero. And this is why this is the comb filter type design. Um, we could see another example of that here uh, this frequency response is uh, what this equation uh, would roughly create. So um, this is pretty much similar, right? X sub t equals uh, the current input sample. So output equals the current input sample minus uh, X sub t minus one. So one sample delay plus 
x of t minus 2, so a 2 sample delay. Um, so this would be a 2, 0 FIR filter. And uh, that's just to show that we can add more of these sort of delayed terms. Um, we could see if we, uh, what we're doing is we're manipulating this uh, A parameter. So we could see this in the frequency response right here's our noise, just regular white noise, and then our FIR filter uh, spectral analysis. We could see as we move this around, we get some shifting, right? We get like a little low pass filter here, right? We see this, this roll off if we play this a little quietly. Um, here's some noise, right? And then here's the effect of the FIR filter. We hear that, uh, you know, dampened a little bit. Uh, if we go, you know, into the negatives, we can get it to be sort of like a high shelf, even a, a, a high pass filter. So uh, the effects that just this one term, this one zero FIR filter, obviously aren't too, uh, you know, uh, too diverse, but uh, other more complicated filters like we could see up here, uh, are going to have other terms, additional, sometimes additional feed forward terms, etc. And now uh, this is called a feed forward term. Uh, we haven't addressed that yet, but uh, this is called a feed forward filter because uh, what we're doing is we take a sample, the current sample, store it for uh, one sample or however long we have our delay set for, and then we feed it forward right feed it forward and add it in with uh, a sample in the future um, now for IIR filters or our infinite impulse response filters uh, we could see an example equation here x sub t which is the output equals uh, sorry y sub t which is the output equals x sub t which is the current input plus uh, our gain coefficient a sub 1 times uh, y sub t minus 1. So uh, the difference between these two, right, is this last term. And what we're doing is instead of using an input uh, sample and adding that in to have our filtering effect, we're using the output sample from the filter uh, to have our filtering effect. Um, this is a uh, this is the, the whole difference between the two, and which is that is why we call them feedback filters, right? We take the output uh, and we feed it back um, into the, uh, the filter network. Uh, and these have a filtering effect. Uh, they're said to operate by making some frequencies go to infinity. Um, so they uh, create these poles, right? And we could see an example of that here, right? We have the our uh, frequency response, our magnitude response of the filter. And these uh, are thought to be going, these are thought to be our poles. They're the effect of our poles, we could see here, right? Going to infinity. Now to look at the implementation of this, uh, it looks similar, right? But we could see how that relates to our uh, equation, right? So we have the output of the filter is gonna equal the current sample, right? X sub T coming in here we're going to take that output so we can get this feedback uh, business together. We're going to take the output, right? This is the same as what would be y sub t at any given sample time. We take that output, we use uh, a delay. This is a one sample delay that allows for feedback. So this is now our y sub t, just uh, our output delayed by one sample multiplied by some gain coefficient, which is what we're gonna be manipulating in this filter, right? We have that all, this term, and then we add those together. And then there's our IIR filter. Now we can see the uh, frequency response again down here, right? As I change this around, uh, you have to be careful with this. Yep, see that, that's gonna, uh, give me one sec, I gotta uh, <laughs> start the video again. So that was uh, basically a perfect example of why you have to be careful with these filters, um, these IIR filters, and it's that they can blow up. And I had to uh, stop the video and restart. That way I could close out of Max and reopen it. Uh, but basically, as we're careful with this filter to not pass one, uh, which would blow up the filter because the gain coefficient would increase uh, forever and uh, the digital system can't handle that. 
but as we move this number around our gain coefficient we could see this filtering effect down here in the IIR section now if we play that we could see how where the FIR filter operates by you know this this sort of zeroing effect this rolling off um, the IIR is going to operate more so with uh, creating poles, creating boosts in the signal. So here's sort of like a, um, you know, really aggressive high shelf. You can get like a low shelf or really just, um, they're not uh, exactly, we would need more terms to have a, uh, like a proper high shelf, low shelf situation, but it's a sort of a, uh, analogous uh, maybe sound but we can see the effect that that's had so uh, the important thing to remember here is that the uh, FIR filters and the IIR filters are uh, both of our sort of types of digital filters that we're going to use to build more complex filters they're the two main categories so it's based it's sort of you could think of it's like the lowest we can go in our digital systems or for what makes our more complicated filters that we use on a daily basis and the difference is FIR filters use feed forward they take it they take an input they uh, add that input with one input sample in the past and output it where IIR filters, you feedback, they take the feedback, uh, they take the output of the filter, they feed it back and add it in with the current input sample. Uh, and that's it, yep, thanks so much.